okay <clears throat> last two sessions we understood how to write the dimensions okay and i think you might have practiced adding dimensions of certain physical quantities okay now let us see what are the uses with these dimensions so now today we are going to see what are the uses of dimensions there should be some use for whatever, whatever you are learning here that what we call it as the application part so here there are some uses of these dimensions first one is to check the correctness of an equation suppose if an equation is given having physical connected with the physical quantities or having some physical quantities we can check whether the given equation is right or wrong or else if a false equation is given you can easily say by just using this dimension method you can say whether if the given equation is right or wrong okay so that is the first use with this to check the correctness of an equation the second one is to derive a correct relationship between different physical quantities <clears throat> the meaning of this is suppose if you want to derive an expression derive a, a new expression uh, for example if you want to find uh, expression for force on what factors does the force depend? Mass and acceleration, isn't it? So force depends upon mass and acceleration. To derive the relation between these two, we can use this. That means if you want to find f is equal to ma or if it is f is equal to m square a or f is equal to ma square, whatever it is, whatever it may be. If you want to find out an equation connecting different physical quantities, we can use this dimension method. So to derive a correct relationship between different physical quantities so that is the second one to convert one system of units into other here usually we will be having for a physical quantity we come we will be uh, having units in SA that is MKS or in CGS it is necessary for us to find, relate the both the both the systems for example if we are having <coughs> meter this is a unit of length in MKS and centimeter. This is the unit of length in CGS. If you want to relate this, here you can go with this dimensional method. For example, if you are having the unit of work in uh, uh, SA, it is Joule. Unit of work in CGS, it is ERC. Now, how can we relate this Joule with the ERC? One Joule is equal to 10 to the power of 7 ERC. That one Joule is equal to 10 to the power of 7 erg so here 1 and there 7 10 to the power of 7 so here this we can find it out using this method to just convert one system of unit into another to converting one system of a unit one from one system is from SI to CGS or from CGS to SI to find the dimensions of a physical constant to find the dimensions of a physical suppose already we did an uh, uh, what you call it as uh, finding the dimensions of g so there if we use the equation f is equal to g m1 m2 by d square you, we use this expression and derive this uh, give the dimensions for g here we can apply the dimension method for finding out the dimensions for g okay so like this these are the uses with these dimensions so first one is to check the correctness of an equation to derive a correct relationship between two different between not two any two or more or, or what how many are there a certain uh, two are like that to derive a correct relationship between different physical quantities to convert one system of units into another to find the dimensions of a physical constant first let us go let us uh, verify all these with an example each <coughs> the first one is to correct the uh, to check the correctness of an equation here we will be using the principle of homogeneity we use this principle for checking the correctness of an equation what does this principle of homogeneity say let us understand with an example here suppose if an equation is given v is equal to u plus at 
v is equal to u plus a t. So now we don't know whether this equation is not because you have come across with this number of times. You can say yeah, this equation is correct. Now if you don't know like this some other equation is given. Some other equation is given. How can you check it out? Means by the principle of homogeneity. What does what does this principle say? Just look here. Is a physical quantity. Write the dimensions of this. L one t power minus one. So this we will be calling as the left hand side, and this we will be calling as the right hand side. And now u. This is also velocity. So the dimensions of this is L one t power minus one. Is it? Velocity dimensions are L one t power minus one. Next, it is acceler acceleration, L1 t power minus 2. Is that it? And time, it is t. Means t to the power of 1. Now look here, it is L1 t power minus 1 plus L1 t power minus 2 t power 1. It is t to the power of minus 1. So this is t 2 times L1 t power minus 1. So, left hand side it is L1 t minus 1, it is 2 into 2 to the power of uh, 2 into L1 t power minus 1. Look here, for this physical quantity on left hand side, the dimensions of L is 1. For the physical quantity length on the right hand side, the dimensions of L is 1. So, for a physical quantity on the left hand side, on the right hand side, the dimension is same. And similarly here, the time, for this physical quantity, the dimension is minus 1. And here also the dimension is minus 1. So on both the sides, if the dimensions are same for a physical quantity, on both the sides, the dimensions of a physical quantity is same. This we will be calling as this will be calling as principle of homogeneity. Okay, so if this is uh, principle of homo homogeneity is is there, then we can say with by using this principle of homogeneity we can we can check the correctness of an equation. Not only this, if suppose if any any equation is given, you can check it out whether the given equation is correct or not. Just by just using this method. Okay. So this is the first use, the first example for the first use. Now take us pause the video, take the screenshot and listen here. Whenever I say pause the video and take the screenshot, there suddenly you go with it. And at that, after that, after completion of the class, video class, <coughs> open that screenshot. You can zoom it and write the running notes. Okay. So this is to be followed. Whenever I say pass and take the screenshot, you take the screenshot so that you can write the running notes. Okay? Please maintain the running notes. Okay. Now we will go with the second use. That is to derive the correct relationship between derive the correct relation between different physical quantities different physical quantities <clears throat> so this helps us to frame new expressions let's go with an example here <clears throat> Suppose if you want to find what is the expression for finding out the time period of a, a simple pendulum. I want to find time period of simple pendulum. You know that, you know what is a simple pendulum. With the help of a thread, we are just hanging a metal ball, we will be calling this as the ball. This is 
कि इसे मुबारक गैस फ्रीली सस्पेंडेड सस्पेंडेड ओके नाउ वी जस्ट ड्रैग इट टू साइड एंड लीव इट इट जस्ट स्टार्ट्स ऑसिलेटिंग इट जस्ट मेक्स द टू एंड प्रमोशन हियर नाउ दिस यू आर कंसीडरिंग एज एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन हियर एंड दिस विल बी कॉलिंग एज The angular displacement, angular displacement. Okay. Now, <coughs> time taken for for one oscillation is its time period. One oscillation. One oscillation means here. Suppose if it is starting here, it is starting. This is the starting point, and you have dragged it here and left it, isn't it? Now you have left it from here. Now what is one oscillation means? One, two, and one fro. One, two, and one fro will make one oscillation. Okay. Or else, suppose you were taking it from here, taking it from here. If it is starting, we are considering from A. It is moving to B. Then it won't stop here. It just moves to the other side, to the other side, and it reaches the other side extreme position, and again comes back and just moves and just oscillates like this. Now, when we will be calling as one oscillation, if you consider this as the starting point, A to B, and then B to C. And then C to B. So this is one oscillation. Okay. The time taken for one oscillation is t. We are considering it as capital T. Time taken for one oscillation. So here, what are the factors we can talk, we can consider for this uh, simple pendulum here? One is the mass of the bob. Yeah. Mass of the bob. And L, length of the pendulum, length of the pendulum, and one external factor is there that is which affects the motion of the pendulum that is acceleration due to gravity. So this is also a factor, acceleration due to gravity, acceleration due to gravity, and. Then the important thing that is the time period, and one more we have just shown here as the angular displacement. Angular displacement. So these are the things what we can connect, what we can relate. So if I continue here, <coughs> I want to find the expression for time period t. So for this time period T, I am going to write this. Let me let me let us assume here time period is proportional to the mass, and time period is proportional to the length, and the time period is proportional to the g, and it is proportional to theta. So here these are the physical quantities, and let let it have some dimensions as uh, x, or let me take it as a, b. C and D. Okay, so that means this mass for it to, to the power of A, L to the power of B, like this I have taken here. Suppose if I just put, keep it as an, uh, an, an equal to sign here, I have to use a constant, some constant K, and M A L to the power of B. The same thing I am going to write here. <coughs> okay, now. <coughs> Look here. Uh, for this time period, I have read the dimensions. This is a constant, no dimensions, and this is a uh, physical quantity mass. These have dimensions. Length we have read the dimensions. Acceleration due to gravity, which is nothing but acceleration, is having dimensions, and this is angular uh, displacement. So this uh, the angular displacement, for this angular displacement. There are no dimensions. 
no dimensions. So D is equal to zero. So now, if I'm going to write the dimensions here, so this is T means T to the power of one. K, just leaving it like that. And M, <coughs> this mass to the power of one means just I'm not writing anything as A length to the power of b g acceleration due to gravity g acceleration due to gravity is l1 t minus 2 so this is l1 t minus 2 to the power of c and uh, i can just exclude this i think to the power of 0 it just goes to 1 so we need to mention that <coughs> so here it is t1 k m a l to the power of b l to the power of c l to the power of b l to the power of c l to the power of b plus c l to the power of b plus c and it is t minus 2c okay so now here now just applying the here just look here on the left hand side on the right hand side, look here, on the right, look at the left hand side, the right hand side, the left hand side, what are the dimensions for mass? Zero. So, the dimensions of mass are zero, that means, uh, m to the power of zero, l to the power of zero, I can write like this. So, just by using the principle of homogeneity, just equating left hand side, right hand side. So, a is equal to zero, and b plus c is equal to zero, this zero. B plus C, both are just equated, left hand side and right hand side. So B plus C is equal to 0, this implies B is equal to minus C. And T1, T minus 2C. So minus 2C is equal to 1. This implies C is equal to minus 1 by 2. If C is equal to minus 1 by 2, then B is equal to minus of minus 1 by 2, that is 1 by 2. So now I got the values here <coughs> as A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1 by 2, C is equal to minus 1 by 2 and D is equal to 0. So now from this expression, so what I am going to do here is just take the values there. T is equal to K m to the power of 0 because a is 0 and l to the power of 1 by 2 because b is equal to 1 by 2 and g to the power of minus 1 by 2 because c is equal to minus 1 by 2 and theta to the power of d that is 0. So from this I can write like this t is equal to k this is a, this becomes 1 and this becomes 1. So l to the power of 1 by 2 g to the power of my minus 1 by 2. This I can write like this as t is equal to k l to the power of 1 by 2 by g to the power of just taking this to the denominator it becomes positive. So g to the power of 1 by 2. Power of 1 by 2 means it just nothing but t is equal to k root of l by g. Power of 1 by 2 means it's root. So now by experiments it is found that k value is 2 pi. So taking that value here, t is equal to 2 pi root of L by G. So here you have derived an expression for time period of a simple pendulum using the dimension method. So using the dimension method, you have created, you have just derived a very good uh, expression here. That is t is equal to 2 pi root of L by G. Just very simple here, <coughs> first we have to think of what are the factors which are going to affect the physical quantity, whatever you are considering. So here, what are these physical quantities here, mass, length, acceleration due to gravity, time period, angular displacement. And just, just uh, this is, formally we are taking it as t is proportional to m to the power of some value, l to the power of some value, g to the power of some value, like this. And now, just equating using the principle of homogeneity, just left hand side, 
uh, dimensions of a physical quality is your correct answer dimensions of the same physical they should be equal so m zero m a so for a physical quantity on left hand side for a physical quantity on right hand side their dimensions are same according to principle of homogeneity for a physical quantity on left hand side for a physical quantity on right hand side the dimensions should be same so a is equal to zero for a physical quantity the dimensions should be same on left hand side or right hand side L to the power of 0, L to the power of B plus C. So, B plus C is equal to 0. So, like that we have derived the values for A, B, C and D. Substituted the value and just got this expression like this. Okay. Now, take the, pass the video and take the screenshot. Okay. So, we will go with the other use to convert one system of unit to another system other system so this for converting one system of unit into another we can use this dimensions method let's see let's go with an example here we have a physical quantity force and for this the SC unit is Newton and the CGS unit is time. Now I want to find the relationship between the Newton and the time or the conversion between Newton and the time. So this is you know this is the SC unit and this is the CGS unit. Okay, so now <clears throat> how to follow this method for finding out the conversion means here. First, write down these dimensions for this physical given physical quantity force F is equal to MA mass L1 L1 T minus 2 sorry M1. So M1 L1 T minus 2 are the dimensions. So now <clears throat> So let us think that one unit in SI is equal to some other value in CGS. That means N1 into the SI is equal to N2 into the CGS. Now N1, I am going to write the dimensions here. In I say that is M1 L1 T minus 2 is equal to N2 M1 L1 T minus 2. I want to show that this this mass is not the same as this mass. This is in SI and this is in CGS. This length is not both on the both sides, it is not same. This length is in SI and this length is in CGS. So to just know the difference. Difference here, just I am writing it as a, 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 a suffix, and for the here it is as b, b, and b. Right now, <coughs> so here for one unit in this is equal to how many units in that? Or so here, one unit in this is equal to how many units in that? That means I want to find this n2. So n2. N2 is equal to, that means N1, N1, A, LA1, T minus 2A by bringing it that side, minus 2. So that is N1 into So it is N1 is uh, it is M mass M A and M B. Let me take this here M A and M B. The mass in this is SI and this is CGS. Okay. Now 
here it is, uh, I'm just going to equate them here. So mass it is 1000 gram and this is 1 gram. So it is 10 to the power of 3. So MA by MB is giving 10 to the power of 3. Conversion between length in SI and length in CGS. LA by LB. So length it is 100 centimeter and this is 1 centimeter. So it is 10 square. Okay. And <coughs> T minus 2 and T so it is only T no. So it is I want to write T A and T B is one second and one second so it is one. So here I am going to write like this M A M B to the power of one L A L B to the power of one. dB to the power of minus 2. So this is <coughs> M1. MA by MB is 10 to the power of 3. It is 10 to the power of 2. And it is 1. So it is N1 10 to the power of 5. Okay. So it is so n2 is equal to 10 to the power of 5. So from this we understood that it is the conversion between these two is 1 newton is 10 to the power of 5 time. Okay. So just go through these ones and next we will we will come with one more example that is uh, between uh, joule and amp. This is, these are the units for the work. You two just to make a try. Okay. And in the next session, we'll, what we'll just do is work with that. And go with the fourth use also. Okay. And we'll do one more example here for the second use and the first use also. Okay. So this is, take a screenshot and just copy this. And just practice that. Okay. See you in the next session.